positions. You can see that the holes look to be off-center or incorrectly placed. I can assure you that the holes are exactly where they belong and it's the channels that are slightly or more in the wrong positions. When you mount your Replitub to your chassis, you will see that the holes do in fact line up perfectly and the slightly off position of the channels will not cause you any difficulty. Next, we added the front floor holes for the gas pedal, the brake pedal, the clutch, and steering column, as well as the holes for the dimmer switch and the floor start button if you intend to use one. Here in the back, you can see where we added the taillight wiring holes. Although not easy to see here, we have moved and repositioned the holes for both the shift levers and transfer case levers to their correct locations. In this picture, you can see where we added the holes for your fuel lines. It is nice to be able to get the gas out of the gas tank to the engine, as well as into the tank from the gas pump. Next, we have a picture of the underside of an M38 military Jeep. While very similar to the earlier CJs we just discussed, this particular body has an extra problem. The floor is not long enough to accommodate one set of mounting holes. You can see here where we added in an L bracket to allow us to then position that mounting hole exactly where it needs to be. This might be a good time to mention that each and every tub that comes in is uniquely wrong. There is very little consistency in bodies, even of the same model. Where this M38 needed to have the floor extended, the next one may not, but the next CJ2A may need it. This is the reason why our engineering fixtures that you just saw are so important. We basically have to start our modification process from scratch on each and every body. Please don't get dizzy here, but we're going to defy gravity and turn this body for ease of identification and understanding. Every place where the primer has been removed is where we have moved, added, or patched a hole on the firewall of the late CJ5, CJ7, and CJ8 scrambler, and I will just run through some of these quickly. Battery tray holes, heater holes, accelerator pedal hole, brake master cylinder hole, hydraulic clutch if installed, wiring harness pass-through hole, emergency brake holes, and the clutch. I've saved these two fixes for last. These are the brackets for the grill support rods left out of the factory but fabricated and welded in place by us. Most restorers would not have even noticed they were missing until the body was painted and mounted on the frame. And finally this hole for the accelerator cable. Not only does this hole need to be square, but it also must be angled upwards towards the top of the engine. This requires a special tool and a bit of skill because the firewall is perfectly flat at that spot. I don't think the term, some drilling may be required, quite describes what is actually required to make one of these bodies mount to your existing chassis. Finally, I'd like to show you, as well as the camera has captured it here, the difference between a body that has been finished with the bullet liner undercoating. On the left is a finished body with just the primer, and on the right is a body with this amazing, rust-protecting, sound-deadening, and heat dispersing product applied. For an additional charge at your direction, this product is sprayed on by the local bullet liner franchisee so you don't have to paint it or otherwise deal with it after you take delivery. Bullet liner was invented by the same individual who invented the Linex truck bed liner 15 years ago, only now using 15 year newer technology. Well, now that you've gotten a brief overview of what we do, I hope that you'll call me so that we can talk about your specific model and your specific issues and see how we can best help you.